this is an explosive story. It's a direct charge against one of the most powerful leaders in world politics today. Did Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman hack the phone of Jeff Bezos? The Amazon CEO hired private investigators to probe the phone hack. His own team is looking into this. So if Jeff Bezos has evidence to prove the shocking claim, he must put it out. And that brings us to the question of security. We live in the digital age. Government services are moving online. People in Estonia, for instance, can vote and register companies online. Brazilians can file their taxes online. Citizens of Buenos Aires interact with city administrators through mobile apps. In India, more than 140 government services are online. It won't be very long before every interaction that we have with our governments will be through the Internet. It saves time and it's cost effective. Of course, the government will move online too. It's already in the process in most parts of the world. There is merit to the argument that the day-to-day -day business of a government can be done online. But is it safe? Even major technology companies would hesitate a little before they reply with a yes. Why is that so? Because technology is not foolproof. In the last 10 years, we've witnessed the many ways in which technology can disrupt lives. Disinformation campaigns, the Cambridge Analytica scandal and the many data breaches that we've seen. In 2019 alone, we saw several unprecedented data hacks. Cyber attack is now a legitimate weapon to target government institutions. Last year, different local governments in the U.S. were attacked by ransomware. What is ransomware? It's a malicious software. It's a software that locks an entire computer and then the attacker demands a ransom from the victim to restore access. In 2019, government officials in the city of Baltimore, a group of cities in Florida and several local agencies in Texas found themselves locked out of their own computers. Officials in Florida paid more than $1 million in ransom to get back in. Others had to shell out much more to rebuild their IT infrastructure. India is not immune to cyber attacks. Between January and October last year, 48 government websites were hacked. The most alarming attack was on the Kurankulam nuclear power plant. While the hackers could not target the critical infrastructure, loopholes within the system were exposed. The time has come to take cybersecurity very seriously. Indigenous solutions are the need of the hour. Take the case of Israel. The Israeli Defense Forces built their own smartphone to securely communicate on the battleground. The internet we know is here to stay. But the growing breaches show that the Silicon Valley alone cannot be trusted to secure our data. As a growing tech power, India must promote indigenous expertise in cybersecurity and leaders with access to sensitive information will need more safeguards. These leaders, ministers, prime ministers, presidents, they move around with the security detail, with a carcade, with guards. But what about their security online? Do we have protocols for that? Leaders do have secure communication tools and networks, we can tell you. Take the case of Barack Obama, the former president of the United States. Obama was perhaps one of the most tech-savvy American presidents. For the longest time, he was allowed to carry only a BlackBerry. Not the one that you and I can buy in the market. This was developed by the American National Security Agency. They stripped this phone of practically every built-in feature. It had no games, it had no selfie camera, texting was not allowed, the phone could only call 10 numbers, and these calls were routed through a special network that is cut off from the world. Most leaders across the world have similar arrangements, a stripped down but secure smartphone with a secure line. It is said that Prime Minister Modi can only use an iPhone because it is believed to be more secure than the Android. But what about his team? and the rest of the country. India lacks a comprehensive cyber security strategy, but plans are in place to fill the gaps, we are told. According to one report, India is planning an umbrella body, a unified, a unified command that will advise and support public and private sectors against cyber threats. But a long way to go.